Nigeria clocks 60 years and President Buhari addresses the nation on unity, field prize, and more. And past leaders are blamed for the issues Nigeria is facing. Find out who made this accusation. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeende. Welcome to Plus Politics. Another Independence Day is here and President Muhammadu Buhari has addressed the nation. The president made a speech on several issues such as the current fuel price, saying that Saudi Arabia charges 168 naira per litre and it makes no sense for oil to be cheaper in Nigeria than in Saudi Arabia. He also stated that the country had the destiny to be the largest and greatest black nation on earth. He further mentioned that it is necessary to chart Nigeria's destination together with strong emphasis on the word together. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Kolade Olutekumbi, a legal practitioner. Good evening, Mr. Olutekumbi. Yeah, good evening. And good Thank to you for having me. And uh, later on, we'll be joined by Mr. Dini Ikunu, who is a public <laughs> affairs <laughs> analyst, who will be joining us any moment soon. Yeah, let me start with Mr. Luther Kumbi, since you're here. Uh, looking at that statement, uh, it was laced with a whole lot of, um, some describe it as inspiring, some say uh, it's, 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 it's not... Um, quite practicable with what some of people believe. Let me get your, your take on the speech generally. Well, um, happy independence to Nigerians and to you people at the studio there. We, on our part, who are citizens of this country and listening to our president's speech, particularly comparing him to the cost of petroleum in some, uh, in some uh, country that he has compared us with. But what the president, the president also failed to do is to also consider what is the wage, what is the minimum wage, what is the average minimum wage of those countries. Because your, your cost of production, or the, the cost of uh, uh, cost of living, and also your income should be should be proportionate. You cannot be making comparisons that a petrol costs much in such a country without also telling us what is the minimum wage for those countries. So that it is your what is the income that you have that determines the expenditure that you know you have the capacity to to, to consume. So really, it's, it's neither here nor there. I think uh, what we can only say is that we are in the country now. We are just praying and hoping that all shall be well. Really, when you look at what is happening in Nigeria as of today, it is nothing really to celebrate. But we must celebrate our togetherness as a nation. We must celebrate our unity. We must celebrate our diversity in unity. But what we are not celebrating is the inequality in, uh, in appointment, a federal appointment, is the inequality of what defines you to be entitled to what in the country where you belong to, where you freely subscribe to be a citizen. So my our 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 worries. To, to Mr. President, is that he should look into this nation and, and uh, you know, go back to his earlier world that it belongs to nobody, but it belongs to everybody. Hmm. Right now, we are not feeling him. Some of us are not feeling him at all. That's the truth. Okay. We um, voted for him with confidence that uh, there will be equality, unity of all appointments. But that is not what we are having today. Okay, let's, and it's so sad. Let's look at um, some other issues where, when Kunu joins us, I would also like to get his take on the comparison 
between the price of oil in Nigeria and that of Saudi Arabia. I know a lot of people have described that comment as a bit insensitive. But let's look at um, the issue of our election. And uh, I'm a f let me quote him. He said, I am a firm believer in transparent, free, fair, and credible election and has been demonstrated during my period as a democratically elected president. This is a quote from some of the things he said this morning. Uh, uh, for some people, they believe that, why should this even be a discourse? Uh, what should, should the president have anything to do with the process of electioneering? Ask yourself one question. What is the difference between APC and PDP? They are the same. They are just group of people with the same ideology, the same vision, the same perspective, the same color, the same person, the same wine in different bottles. So we don't have political parties in Nigeria. There are no choices for Nigeria to make. PDP and APC are the same. Look at Edo. The governor left as a governor of APC and he joined PDP and he won election. Nobody is asking what is the what what is the ideology of that political party. So for me, when you, when you are talking of uh, uh, political uh, uh, issue in Nigeria, they are the same. So when I be, look at uh, APC governor supporting the PDP aspirant, so they are the same. There's no difference between them. It's just unfortunate that. Nigerians have been, uh, have been have, uh, over the years, been, been okay. uh, uh, giving uh, that uh, deception. Mr. Luther, be, let's try and situate, let's try and situate the, what he said within context now. Uh, I, I, I see your view, and I'm not here to argue that with you. But over the years, we've seen a lot of encomium being poured on uh, the president in power. You remember the, the glorious song that was sung for former President Goodluck Jonathan, even before he was declared a loser or when he didn't win, he congratulated the, um, the, 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 the opposition then. And people felt it's because he allowed the process to thrive. I'm looking at it from that angle that it seems to be saying that, because we are coming into that discourse where he said, no past government has even done as much as what he has done, looking at the resources available to him. So can we situate it in terms of what happened in Edo, in terms of what happened in some states where they lost out. But my worry is, should he even say anything since it is called Independent National Electoral Commission? Yes, uh, you are right. Honestly, the, the president has no business commenting on the state uh, uh, election because he's supposed to be the father of both the parties. He's supposed to be neutral. And uh, to, to me, for a particular party to be, to be going to say thank you, is, is, uh, is, is, it gives the pressure as if the president is in support of him or what. So for us, it doesn't make a, it's not, it's not good enough. But like I said earlier on, the fundamental issue is that there's no difference between the two of them. It's the same father that gave back to all of them. <laughs> they are children of the same parents. So whenever they find themselves, either in APC or PDP, they have, no diff they have no political ideology that is different from each other. And that is what we are lacking in Nigeria. If we have different ideologies, people will be able to uh, situate their votes. Say, OK, I want welfare from a particular party A. I want uh, social services. I want ed free education. I want this and that. But you don't get that. How many people read the manifesto of this political party? Do they, do they do we even have the privilege of seeing their manifesto? So what is this? What is the ideology of APC? What is the ideology of PDP? If they have different ideologies, why is why is it so easy for one of them to move from one party to another? Hmm. Do you have that in America? Hmm. Have you ever seen a republic a Republican moving to uh, move 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 moving to the the other party? Is it possible? Okay. So that is the problem. The, pro the president should be neutral. They should not drag him into state politics. 
and that it is it is constitutional responsibility to ensure that the instrument of government, the armed forces, the police, that they, they remain neutral. No, nobody should celebrate, nobody should give a kudos. But to, to the extent that I agree that our president is a Democrat, because he allows the instrument, maybe we'll not be having it like that in this country. We've always had a situation where the federal might is usually used as an okay. instrument of oppression and instrument of Mr. rigging Mr. election. Uh, so to that extent, one will say kudos to the president. Okay, I, I'm already, I was going to refer to you as a lecturer now, and uh, from the marks you've given so far, it's been quite low. So let me look at another parameter now. Uh, looking at what he said, uh, I'm, I'm quoting him verbatim. He said, we need to begin a sincere process of national healing. And this anniversary presents a genuine opportunity to eliminate old and outworn perceptions that are always put to test in the lie they are the in the lie they always are. So I, I'm asking that question now. This national healing, it appears the wound has been there from 1966 when uh, 1967 when there was civil war. Or what exactly do you think the president meant, and what's your take on that? What? Um, honestly, going through the speech of our president, I think uh, what our president is just trying to do is to speak to us without much uh, yes. reference to the realities that, as we have it now. Because there's no, there's no doubt that the, the issues are terribly bad. You know they are they are terribly bad. We are we are we are not we are not there. We are far 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 from the expectation of Nigeria has been dashed. Our hopes and beliefs that we are going to promise land has been defeated. We can only hope for the best and pray for Mr. President for God to continue to lead him and give him the wisdom and the knowledge. So to pilot the affairs of this country, you know, because when each time you go through that speech, you read it, the, especially the references from the emancipation of the country, from the from those who had sacrificed their lives up to now that we have it. Like I said earlier, the only thing we are celebrating is our unity in diversity. Okay. There's nothing else. And this unity in diversity, I'll, I'll give you a quick example, and I, I, I would like your sincere opinion on that. As we speak, a lot of people have reminded us that the crisis in southern Kaduna did not just start today. And we also hear government who seems to be giving such funny excuse, too, as much as it's a reality. But what we are interested in is solution. Now, we have the Zango Katav who refused to stay together. We have... We are beginning to lose count of how many people have killed themselves due to communal clashes all across the country. Uh, we've seen people who are supposed to be neighbors, people who are supposed to be helping one another, you know, killing themselves in drones. So how do we even take care of these past wounds in terms of the national healing? It's very, very unfortunate that we are having this kind of situation in our hands. First and foremost, these are brothers who are from the same uh, 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 origin, who had decided to uh, cohabitate together. But what normally happens is once you have divergence in religion, you know, people begin to, you know, take advantage of that and they begin to see the, the song of wars. It's all for political gains. Because if you look at what is happening in, uh, in uh, southern Kaduna, where majority of them are Christians, it seems to me that what is happening right now is an attempt by the, ethnic, the two ethnic groups to now begin to agitate, agitate on religious ground. Okay. And that shouldn't be. This country is a secular state. Everybody should have the opportunity to practice it the religion he or she wishes to practice. But what have we gotten now? What we have gotten now is intolerance. People want to take over by with all force. We want to display people who are the originally in the sector. 
you know, the, the, the ravages in the north, if you look at it, it's so, it's so pathetic. Okay. Thank you know, you so it's much. so pathetic, and it's, it, we only pray that God will help us. Because right now, what we are, what is happening in the north is not, is not what Nigeria people are expecting. Exactly. Every day we hear of killings. Exactly. We hear of bomb blast here and there. Okay. Boko Haram has taken over that region. We have the occupation of Nigeria. Okay, the, Mr. Luther, Kubi, I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, luckily, we have uh, Adini Kunu joining us in this conversation. Uh, Mr. Kunu, uh, quite a lot has been said. Uh, I'm sure um, there's one or two issues why you've not been able to join us now. But let me quickly get your take. Uh, uh, have you gone through the speech or did you listen to the president? And what were going through your mind when you listened to that speech? <laughs> yeah, could well, I think um, okay. it, it's the... That it has more to do with the president uh, trying to give us reasons why things are the way they are. And uh, for me, I believe that um, anybody ordinarily would have expected him to take the polls, the people at the moment, with very many disaffections. Um, I would want to say that based on facts, the thing in the speech. Um, are what we should throw away, fast water. Uh, for instance, if you look at um, comparative analysis of how much we actually procure PMS in this country uh, as against what we have in places like Chad and Niger, as well as Ghana, you find out that um, before now, they were paying far less. But, 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 but we are have to look at other things comparatively. You have to look. Oh, it's been a very, very bad network today. I, I wish, uh, probably we might need to reconnect with you on, on via phone. But staying with you, Mr. Olutekubi, I was just also going to look at some of the things he said, and that sounds like a message of hope. He did say that uh, it has been demonstrated time and time again that Nigerians in diaspora frequently excel in science and technology in medicine and sports arts and many other fields i, I was trying to imagine what the contest is uh, does this have something to say about the environment where nigerians can only succeed yes yeah, yes why are they does why are they diaspora in the first system they diaspora because the system does not allow them to travel to, 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 to excel in their chosen profession. You go abroad and you see Nigeria performing excellently well. But right here in Nigeria, it's a different story altogether. So we should begin to look inward. We are endowed with both human and intellectual capacity. But what we have found out is that. The ones that were there are either frustrated by the admission policy of our bad educational system, where a child from the East, we have to score 300 in a, in a common entrance to community school, and he will not be given admission, and somebody from my state, Kogi state, or in the northern state, who score 100, will be given priority. You cannot have Excellence in such a country. When you are making Nigeria excelling abroad, yes, they will excel because the system does not discriminate. The system provides opportunities for everybody. You know, every man to his own capacity and strength. But in this country, there are some vehicles that are fast on, that on the fast lane that they will have they, that they have applied brake to enable them. Hmm. to enable the ones that are on a slow lane okay. for them to go together. No country ever will prosper with such a system. Okay. Nigeria must begin to allow okay. everyone, irrespective of his race, ethnic, ethnic group beliefs, given a fair play. to strive equally. Exactly. Uh, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, probably we might not be... Uh, time is really fast spent. But let me quickly get uh, Kunu's... Uh, uh, last comment on this, we may have to retain Hadini Kunu for the second segment, which is like the second leg of this conversation. 
just to be fair to him. So, uh, Mr. Nini, <laughs> let's look at um, uh, where you stop before the network uh, in, uh, interrupted or <laughs> misbehaved. <laughs> misbehaved. <All right. laughs> Let me get your take, then we'll keep you for our second segment. You well, are still talking I, about the I speech. I saying that if you want to be genuine, um, the president actually said a lot of things that we can fault based on facts. But if we did a contextual analysis of the things mentioned in the speech, you can only agree with me that uh, there, there should have been a lot more empathy in what the president said, and there should have been a lot more comparative facts in that particular one. Uh, if, you, if you're talking about Saudi Arabia, for instance, it's on social media regarding the comparative analysis. Uh, some of the things that they often do in this country, especially the policies we get, oftentimes subtract uh, from the benefits you should get from government. Now, this is the picture. This year alone, 2020, the CBN has actually uh, you know, made certain uh, new guidelines regarding financial transactions. In fact, the recent one that is most ridiculous today is that you cannot spend more than $100 on your card when you travel abroad. Uh, the question I really need to ask them is, how did we arrest somebody who had over 2,886 cards traveling to Dubai about two and a half weeks ago? The reality is they make certain laws, but there are people that it affects and it doesn't affect some people. Now, for instance, the CBN has actually come up with lots of regulations. In terms of the economy now, because we're looking at the economy. When the president is speaking about the economic situation, talking about how coronavirus has actually affected the earnings of government, I was expecting him to also say that apart from government earnings, the individual is suffering. And as a result of that, certain new guidelines that charges more. For instance, a man earns 80,000 naira a month. Having deducted tax from source, the company he works for credits its account with that 80,000 naira. They first of all deduct money from the person who sends that 80,000 naira. When the 80,000 naira gets into the account of the other person, they deduct another money. When you decide to transfer money to somebody, they deduct another amount from you. I think if there's any time that the Nigerian people have been actually treated wrongly with respect to the fiscal policies at led by Godwin and Mayfield, I think it is during this COVID-19. Okay. And I feel that um, we should not make it a ritual where the president only gives speeches. It has to resonate with people. There are lots of fireworks with respect to the emotions of people in the country. And the president has given a speech. But if I did a placement of that speech side by side the reality in this country now, I tell you, I wouldn't make, say it holds a lot of water. Okay. You know, I, you know, I, I just made a promise right. to you that we'll yes. have to keep you, but thank you for that uh, uh, angle you brought in the issue of economy. But we'll be talking more on politics because the second topic will okay. deal with um, the comparison between this current I administration. I couldn't hear you well before, that's why. Yeah, and, and the past administration. Thank you once again. And thank you once again, uh, Mr. Uh, Koladi Olutekubi, for your time and for your insight. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And happy Independence Day. I can greet you very well now. <laughs> yes, happy Independence Day to everyone in the, in the studio. Yeah. And to all Nigerians. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll quickly take a short break now. And when we return, we'll be looking at who is to be blamed for the current problems Nigeria faces. That'll be all for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.